Hello. How's it going? How's everybody? I figured I would play some with one of the palettes that I got in a recent box just for the heck of it. I mean, I've never used Lime Prime before. Might as well do something with it. This is the Venus 3. Better known as Very Pink. Pinkies and purplies and that kind of stuff. Anyway, you're going to see, eventually, the there's going to be some changes in my setup. We're rearranging the bedroom. So, even though when we first did the paint in this room, I wanted the gray background that I currently have. Because, nice and neutral, right? Right. Okay. It's very possible I could either have gray curtains or a yellow wall next. The other three walls in the bedroom are kind of a pale, buttery yellow kind of color. We'll see. It's kind of, kind of, depend on exactly how we end up rearranging the furniture. Anyway, anybody who has the Lime Prime 3, this is bliss. I don't know, with the white base on it, looks all, a little bit like, it's a little deep, and it's a little, at this point, it's kind of stark, it's like, a little like, putting on clown makeup. Anyway, I just turned in, today, the final piece of my final project for the current class. Current, my grade is currently running an, about an A. Once the current, once the final project is all put together and looked at, that will give me my determination on what the grade will end up for the whole class. The, um, the class is a thousand points. The final project consists of about almost 400 points or something like that. It's, it's, it's 300 or 300 plus. So, yeah. Gotta wait for the final project to be processed before we'll know what all the final numbers will look like. However, I've been running pretty much it is at an A most of the class, so we'll hope. This one was on linguistics. Let's figure out whether or not we're talking in a specific socioeconomic register, or in a formal register, or in a casual register. Let's decide whether or not we have our syntax correct. Don't forget the semantics. Yeah. We were told in this project at the very beginning, we were told to pick two pieces of work to compare and look at and figure out, you know, where there's been a verbal drift in language, how it's used, you know, language differences over time and distance and that kind of thing. So I decided to do a linear distance that was about as far apart 
as I could get. H.P. Lovecraft, who is from New England, if I remember correctly, originally it was Providence, Rhode Island, and Ashley Capes, who is a current writer in Melbourne, Australia. That's a stretch. Now, H.P. Lovecraft had a tendency for his main characters to be pretty much kind of a wealthy upper class kind of thing because that's the way he was raised. He didn't really have <clears throat> a lot of money his entire life because his grandfather's accounts and stuff had been really, really badly managed. So that didn't help him. When his, so when his grandfather died, they lost all of that. And it was a long time before he actually started working at a job that had money coming in. And, you know, but he was raised upper class. So he tended to set his characters in the upper class. I took his short story, The Tomb, and put it up against Ashley Cape's with his urban fantasy, the first book of the urban fantasy series that he's worked on, and it's called Graves Robbed Heirlooms Returned. And I'm going, okay, we have two different stories, both of which, though, are centered around corpses and tombs and such. That works for me. So then we have the other distance between the two. We have the distance of, you know, in the tomb, main character is described as having more than enough money for commercial purposes. And with Capes, the main character kind of starts off hoping he can find a job because he's starting to run out of funds. He's not destitute, but he's running short on money. And so you've got Modern, because the, the Capes book was written in 2019. And then you have some upper crust from 1917. That's a big stretch in time and manner of speaking. So, yeah. I was having fun with this, and my instructor is going, you sure about this? And I'm going, yeah. And because he's going, you know, urban fantasy has a tendency to be kind of freewheeling, and Dearest Howard, which is Lovecraft's first name, if you've ever seen it, it's usually H.P. Lovecraft. First name was Howard. <coughs> Howard Philip, if I remember correctly. But Dearest Howard was anything but freewheel. 
fairy stayed. I'm going, yes, we need to do this. And he's going, all right. <laughs> so, thereby hangs that tale. I had a blast working on it. Really did. Lots of fun. But then I had, the part of the stuff is I've never really gotten into things like pronunciation keys and learning all of the, the control characters so that you can get the, the really fancy pronunciation stuff. And I'm going, I don't know how to do any of this. And the instructor is going, to uh, there's a lot of you that aren't going to know how to do the funky, you know, pronunciation keys and all that. I get it. If you just want to write it out, I'm good with it. And I'm going, thank goodness. And then he says, however, if you are, you're good with doing this stuff, bring it on. I'm good with this. And I'm going, cool. So all them people who are interested in that kind of thing and are good at doing I mean, you've got everything from from bits and pieces and upside down letters and all kinds of other things, especially where you've got like diphthongs, which is collections of letters to make other to make sounds that <sighs> some of them are kind of weird because they're make you're making sounds that could actually be made with other letters. But you're doing it with these funky letters because of where they originated. And it's just a little bit, just a tad bit different than, you know, one that uses kind of standard letters to represent. It's like kind of trying to figure out how to speak Gaelic without, and, and it's like, dude, there are some things you just have to put the funky letters in because like Gaelic had its own, had its own and has its own alphabet, which does not correlate with the alphabet we currently use for an English speaker. So, yeah. You get some strange looking pronunciation keys for words that have some interesting combinations of sounds and such. So, anyway. Too long, didn't read. Um, I don't know how to do them funky dingbats that they use for those sounds and pronunciation keys and stuff for the fancy stuff. So I just printed it out the best I could like I would if I was trying to tell somebody else how to pronounce a word. So, anyway, I got finished with all that, turned in all of my stuff, you know, 15 pages worth of paper, almost three pages worth of references. Fun. Fun.
one. I don't have horrendous amounts of, you know, horrendous numbers of classes left. That's Meester trying to call the puppies to go out. And Miss Lolly is flat asleep over here, laying on the bed. Just flat asleep. Any of you that are on Facebook that are on, that have my Facebook stuff, I posted a picture today that was from 12 years ago when my little dogs were still pup pups. Well, mostly pup pups. They were youngish dogs. Lot, but it, 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 it's all they, there's a little brown down here in the corner but it's a kind of a pinky brown and it just this whole thing is just pink anyway I had a lovely time with this class because you have to go back and think about using words, how you use them, why you use them, what you're doing with them. You know, whether or not you're putting them together so that you've got an alliteration that makes a bigger impact on your on your readers. Making sure that, you know, if you've got somebody who's supposed to be talking upper crust or has a dialect that would make a big impact on what they're saying or to whom they're saying it, They've got to actually work together correctly. So, you know, we were talking about dialect. We were talking about writing in dialect. Is, writing in dialect is partially where you get all those really weird looking scrunched words because you're trying to write them the way someone from a specific location would pronounce them. And some people don't like it because it makes the wording harder to read. But I think that's actually kind of part of the experience because if you're talking to somebody with that particular dialect, you've got the same kind of problem of just plain trying to understand them. So, yeah, trying to read it and trying to understand it kind of go hand in hand there. Because some people, you know, you can get somebody who's got a really thick accent and it's hard as heck to understand what it is they're saying or trying to say because the the words don't make any sense They just don't make any sense because you can't understand. The dialect changes it enough that the, the word doesn't sound similar to anything you've ever heard that would go with it that would make sense to the 
to what you're talking about or attempting to talk about. In my case, when we were do we did here, pick a different piece of work that is not the one you're already working on for your paper. And discuss dialect based on it. So, me being me, I grabbed up To a Louse by Robbie Burns and took off with that one because it's written in a Scots dialect. And I'm going, this ought to flummox a few people. It's not only Scots, but it's an antique version, considering when it was written. So, you know, had to do that one because it came in with people trying to figure out what in the hoo-ha he was saying, since it's written in dialect. And I actually had some people who looked at it who were going, what is he even talking about? And it's like they're trying to understand not only the premise of to a louse based on being about a louse but trying to understand what was being said about the louse And one of my classmates is going, the heck's a louse? And I'm going, okay, you'd probably recognize the plural better. You know, lice. Because even today, we still have lice that turn up every so often in the school system and they send home little forms, and everybody goes running to the local shopping center and grabs up all the bottles of RID so they can de-louse their children. I'm going, hey. Sometimes you just gotta. It's like it's not the kid's fault. It's not any of the kid's faults. And in some cases, it's just, it happens. Somebody gets stuck living someplace, like God help me, the immigration centers that we currently have that are such a mess. You're going to get lice. Even if the kids were clean when they went in. So, yeah, trying to convince people that they could read something in dialect. And I'm like going, look, most of you guys in this class, if you run into Scott's dialect at all, most of you have, like, 
thanks to Dragonfly and Amber and some of the other Wild Highlander books that people have, have done over the years, you've run into more of the Highlander dialect than the Lowlander dialect, which is what we're working with with Robbie Burns. So, you know, you get Dragonfly and Amber and about half a dozen different authors who are just seriously into the into the wild Highlander routine. And yeah, they're going to get some of the dialect. They're not going to get all of it. And they're not going to get the older stuff. Anyway, that's the kind of stuff we were doing in this class, is looking at dialects and looking at word usage and word choices and whether or not you were speaking formally to someone all the time or if you were you know more intimate or more casual and that kind of stuff it's it's interesting next class is writing feature stories you know like our magazine which means doing research and stuff you know stuff so we'll see how that one goes let's see no nope. not that all right where's the other one? aha let's see how badly I can screw this part up Yes, I stuck some of the eyeshadow across as liner. Now I'm putting some more liner. Because it's me. Okay, so I think I like the Lime Prime formula, or at least the one that's in the Venus 3. Haven't seen any issues with it that stick out to me anyway. I keep going back and forth, though, on stuff like this because I hear some people who just absolutely love thus and so and then some people who just absolutely loathe thus and so and it's like you sometimes wonder if maybe you could convince people to just make up their minds anyway a little prep this is one of the elf blur sticks we know about me and elf I don't just use Elf, but I really like my Elf stuff. This is the Prep It Blur Stick. And at this point, I'm going to pick up brush and just kind of smear it around. And see where we go. Uh, oh, it sounds like the teenagers are being angsty again. Always fun. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this stuff or not, but two teenagers trying to decide which one of them is the worst doofus on the planet. It's teenagers. What do you do besides duck and run?
because let me tell you. Duck and run. Oh, now they're threatening to call the adults. I'm like, okay, yep, go ahead. Let's see how that works out for you. Trying to cover up a spot or two here. My face is a little broke out, but this is more to do with spring allergies than much of anything else. In this area, we get so much pine pollen that it doesn't just clog up my sinuses. Once it gets on my skin, it starts breaking out. See, because it doesn't look quite as bad when it's the allergy stuff as it does when I'm having a flare. That's when it gets really bright red, really obnoxious. So, yeah. So much fun. Do 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 Yeah, I've even got spots along the edge of my mouth that are kind of I don't know why Finney is having a fit. He just went out and came back in. Oh, and I picked up... I maybe should have saved this one until after I did, did my hair color, but I'll do a different pink. Or something when I do that. Picked up some completely vegan hair color. I don't even remember the name of the company now. But it's supposed to be really good stuff. When I get the stuff in my hair and I come on to show you the stuff in the hair. I'll try and remember to have the name handy. Or at least get it in the description. And what I picked up says that it's rose pink. I'm waiting. We will see. I'll be right back. See, right back, and you didn't have to listen to the honk. Oh, yes, and yeah, I put my eyebrows on before I got on camera. I, it's, it's, you know, it's no big deal. It's an eyebrow pencil. Nothing huge. Brush them up a little bit, stick the color on, brush them some more, and go on. This is not like it's some great horking huge procedure. Anyway. Get that about even. Do 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 right. Use a little of this. It's the Elf Camo CC Cream. Uh, 
Now, I like using either CC cream or pretty much nothing during the summer because why bother? I'm going to sweat it off. And usually what I've been doing the last couple of days where I've had to go out for errands is I don't even put foundation on at all. I put some sunscreen moisturizer. Like I've got the La Roche Pose um, Anti Helion, which is a level SPF 50. Stick it on, roll on out the door. But on the cheeks, I use just a little bit of this product from e.l.f. It's basically just, you know, it's lips and cheeks and all manner of stuff. See, I love. And it's monochromatic multi stick. So I tap a little of that on the cheeks. And I tap a little of that here and there over most of the face. I don't really go anywhere lower. Because mask is going to be there. What difference does it make? I play up the eyes quite a bit, but I don't bother with much else. And I've got the 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 stuff from Elf, and then I've got some LA color stuff. You know contour and highlight. And I've got a little bronzer stick. and I take that stuff and just kind of slap a little here and there. Across the forehead a little bit and then along here. And I don't get crazy because it fall off if I try to put too much on. You know, I put a little of stuff like the Apple and Balm lip mask on my lips before I stick the mask over. I don't bother with lipstick. That kind of stuff. About the only time I do anything that's like, you know, normal for what I like to do at this point is with the going out thing is if I'm doing something a little more intense because I'm going to, you know, like some sort of an appointment or something. Like I'm just going to the store. It ain't happening. If I'm doing something on here, I might go a little more hand. You know, it just kind of depends. I'd just be happy if I didn't have to wear this, the mask. Yes, I know. It's annoying. Anybody who tries to tell you that it's not actually annoying has, has fantasies of being either a nurse or ER physician and wants to wear the dang thing. 
And I'm going, yeah, not so much. I'm just not, I'm not that into it. But as much as it's annoying, I still wear it. It's just me. It's how I work. I wear it because it needs to be done. I wear it because that way I protect other people. I wear it because currently in Oregon, we are still under orders, therefore it is the law. I wear it because there's a sign on the door in places that I go that No shirt, no shoes, no mask, no service. There you go. All right, now my dogs are having a conniption. Again. Little squeaker is Finny. Let's see. don't see any of my highlighter in that little basket that I normally look for. So, hey, this one's kind of a peachy gold. It's more of a peachy and it, it's got some glow to it, but it's more of a matte. The pencil is more of a matte, so whatever works. So you get a little bit of a highlight there. But it's not like glow to the gods kind of thing. I'm not beaming to space. Which, yeah, takes some of the fun out of it, but whatever. And then I start looking around and see what I'm going to put on my big mouth. Let's see. Who have I got in? Not that one. Hi, sir. Come here. That's the eldest granddaughter calling the youngest grandchild. That's what's this one? Yeah. Bold pink. What the heck? See, this is what happens when the weather starts to get warmer and I leave the bedroom door open for circulation. Anyway, next video, I don't know if I'm going to have my hair done or not before I do the next one. Don't know. However, we should have the place rearranged. So, Lime Crime, Venus 3. Now, I haven't put any mascara on yet. 
I don't know if I want to. Let's see. I've got blue mascara. I've got green mascara. I've got your basic black mascara. I'm going to do the green just because I feel like it. I got the green and the black through AOA Studio. It's like, if you're going to do something like these funky color mascaras, you know, I figured I'll buy them for a dollar. That way it's not so bad if I don't use them up before they start to dry out. But I'm going, all right, I've got brown eyeliner on. I've got pink eyes. Let's put the green in. The oldest grand girl is handy now and again. She does things like sometimes if the dogs are having a fracas in the middle of filming, she'll like take them out. We have a little problem occasionally with the little dogs and the big dogs because the other dogs in the house are huge. We can't let them out together because the little the little dogs are old and getting a little frail, and the big dogs are overfractious puppies. Overfractious puppies. So yeah, we kind of keep them segregated. Alrighty. Lime Crime Venus 3. Brown eyeliner. Green mascara. Elf lip lacquer in bold pink. Anybody else got this uh particular palette? Done anything with it? Show somebody? Maybe? Please? Tell us what you think of it. I'm actually pretty impressed with the formula. Would I buy it again? No. Am I going to use it? You betcha. You know I don't buy palettes over pretty much... Well, I can't say I really don't buy palettes over a certain amount because I just ordered one that's way over my regular certain amount. During this most recent restock, I managed to get an order to go through for the um, Nebula. It went through. It's on the way. I wanted that palette. Now, I had several reasons I wanted that palette. I've been in at least two of the massive group collabs that Angelica was in. Angelica is a gamer. There are names in this palette that correspond to one of the games she and I are both in. I'm space happy. The same kind of thing that she, she collected, according to one of her, her vids, she was talking about how she came up with the colors and stuff. She collects images of nebulas 
that come down through some of the big space telescopes. I do the same kind of thing. So, yeah. I wanted it bad enough that paying for the shipping and paying for the pallet took me well above my usual top of the line. So, I've thought about a couple others. I mean, I love watching Hannah on Smoky Glow. But we haven't actually done, been in like the big group collabs together that I'm aware of. Um, one of the other palettes that I have that's kind of a, a YouTuber collab is the Paulina from Blush Tribe. They went, unfortunately, Blush Tribe went under, but I didn't actually buy the Paulina palette, somebody gifted it to me. Pink Sweets wanted me to be included in one of these big group collabs, so she bought two palettes and sent me one, for which I am very grateful. I love that palette. It's delightful. Unfortunately, Blush Tribe tried to do a rebranding, and it just... Thing, and then COVID hit. So, yeah, I don't know if they're going to try to come back after this or, or not. It's really sad, though, because they had gorgeous, gorgeous formula for their shadows. Absolutely delightful stuff. Um, but I'm not big on spending lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of money on palettes. The other thing is, if I can find a way to do it, I'll try and dupe the big suckers. I got no shame. I will go through my collection, and I will look for stuff that I think I can use to dupe some of these other palettes. Or I will buy from, like, C-Color to pick up their inspired buys in their collection. This one the Unisex 5 is, the, is, is inspired by the Dominique Cosmetics Lemonade. There's a whole raft of the Unisex palettes that are all part of a collection that they did that's got several different influencer stuff in. Um... There's also some other C colors, C color stuff and W7 stuff and, you know, just where other companies, several different companies were doing the, the monochromatics and stuff and Delancey did monochromatics. I will go digging through my stuff, looking for things that I can do. You know, the like things like the Stone Cold Fox. I picked up one palette from Profusion that's got most of the neutral mats in it. This is a profusion. And then I picked up some singletons through um, 
coastal scents. And then I picked up, you know, I've got some other just basic palettes in here that I picked up to use to make some of the other stuff. So, you know, there's my coastal scents. I can do most of the looks that I had any interest in doing from Stone Cold Fox. Or with some of this stuff I've got cremated. Some of this stuff I've got, oh, I've got just about any palette I really want to try and dig up. And it doesn't, it doesn't take that much to look through your collection. So, yeah. There you go. Lime Crime 3. Excuse me, Lime Crime Venus 3. I'll get it right at some point. Anyway, hopefully the next video you will see the new setup, possibly even the new hair color. Yep, I definitely like the Lime Crime formula, at least in the Venus 3. Haven't tried any other Lime Crime. Don't know nothing about any other Lime Crime. Um... If you've got a palette or a palette idea or a challenge for me of a palette that you would like to see me try and dupe from my stash, suggest it. Just drop it in the comments and suggest it. Um, however, if you suggest it, I hope you've got the palette because I'm going to challenge you to do a, you do with yours on a bingo. I will take mine that I cobbled together and put them in the same order and do a bingo and we'll see where we end up. What do you think of that? Or, if you really want, you can run up the bingo and I will use the same colors from my stash collection, my doopies, and we'll both use the same colors and see where we end up. How's that one? Pick your poison. Pick it well. Now, believe it or not, there are some of the palettes that I have palleted dupes for. There are some of the palettes I actually have because either they've been gifted or they've kind of come in a subscription box, or I've won them on a giveaway. I mean, I've got the Natasha Denona Mini Lila that came in on a giveaway. So, you want to try and go for that one, you're going to be up against the Mini Lila. Pretty much anything else that you want to take a shot at. I will do my best to pull together the colors and we can run up a bingo and both of us will use the same colors. You from your palette, me from my collection. And we'll see where we end up. Be good.